And so this is why evil people sometimes are rich and prosperous and seem to be winning in this life. And sometimes Christians or believers are poor. It's suffering because we know that this system that we're living in is going to pass away when Christ comes. And then the last scripture I just want to leave with y'all is Psalms chapter 73. There's an entire chapter of the Bible about evil and godless people winning right now, godly people suffering. All right, Psalms chapter 73, and it is the song of Asaph. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well weighed nine slipped. And I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prospered in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in any seed. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend the generations of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, Thou hast cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. A dream, as a dream, when one awakens, so, O Lord, when thou awakens, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart hath, was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast beholden me by thy right hand. Thou hast, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail it, but God is strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them and go a whoring from them, from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God and I may declare thy works. So next time you think that evil people are winning and God's people are losing, please read Psalm 73. It's an entire song about how a believer, a follower of God is thinking that, yo, evil people are prideful. They speak wild against God. They are rich. They are not convicted about anything that they are doing. And then when he goes to the house of the Lord, the synagogue, he finds that he had, he was ignorant and he did not have understanding about their end. Because again, they may be winning now, but eternally they're going to be burning in hell forever. So a slippery step is their path and destruction is their end. And so again, you can't take any of this stuff with you in eternity. So if I am rich in this life and not rich towards God, I'm impoverished, I'm a slave to sin, right? 
And so that type of bondage is only going to make you slave with the devil and fire, right? But if I am rich towards God in good works, um, doing the great commission of Matthew 28 and 19, going on all the works, preaching the gospel and making disciples of all nations, boom, I am rich towards God. And this is why we must believe in the cross. We know that in this life, everything will pass away. <laughs> everything will be gone. But anything that we do in this life for God in Christ will be remembered and we will be rewarded. And so this is the beauty of the gospel, that there is no suffering that does not go unrewarded, right? It's, again, I keep saying the scripture because it's such a beautiful scripture. It says that if we will be partakers of his suffering, we will also be partakers of his glory. 